Okay, so we talked about the product roadmap, how it is structured, and what type of information we're capturing right here. We talked about the different views that we can uh, restructure and view the, the same items a bit differently. And then let's talk about the three other boards that lives within this folder. So we have our competitive analysis, our feature requests, and our feature releases board. Let's dive into the competitive analysis first. This is something that product managers can use to manage anything and everything that has to do with competitors, right? So in our case, we have structured it so that we have different groups. Each is going to be dedicated to a different topic. For example, tier and pricing, integrations, analytics, and then the columns over here are going to be listing our competitors. We can see if we are comparable to them, we are weaker than them, we're stronger than them. It allows us to align ourselves and place ourselves in the competition to see where we can get and should get better and where we're good at. Uh, this is something that can be ongoing. We can connect, obviously, features that are going to be supporting us um, beating our competitors. So we know that whenever a few features are completed, we know that by then we're going to be better than competitor four, for example. So this is another cool feature and board that we've added to this structure. So you can use that uh, for competitive analysis. The next board I'm going to touch on is the feature requests. So as I mentioned earlier in the previous video, um, inside of the, our roadmap, we can create epics or requests that are coming from feature requests. These can come internally from the sales team or the CS team, for example, but this can also come from external customers, uh, from customers that we actually have, sorry. Uh, but they are raising requests through either a form or any community that we might have. Now, this board is structured so that we have different groups for the different domains, for example, inside of our uh, company, and we have a dedicated group for the released features. But then if we're looking at the structure, we can see who's the product manager who's managing this request and this feature that we're going to be creating for it. Who are the subscribers for this request? So if this is a customer that we want to send an email to once this is done, if this is a customer support uh, manager that requested to be notified whenever this is done, uh, it can be a salesperson and so on. So you can subscribe, and this is not the only way that you can subscribe, but this is one way very visual to see who's going to be informed or who you might want to connect with once the feature is going to be completed or if you want to have some more information from them in order to um, produce a better product. I'm also capturing what's the planning oops, what's the planning status. So they have visibility into when this is going to be released. If this is it planned for a specific quarter, if it's already in beta, released to everyone, and so on. We're capturing the domain in order to be able to group them by the specific domains. And we touched on how we can regroup our items using the group by feature over here. And then a bunch of other uh, information that we can capture regarding a specific request. But then one of them that is very, very important is the way that we can connect them to existing customers. So let's say we have three different customers that are worth uh, a lot of money for the company, and they all have requested the same feature. We might have added it using uh, either manually putting it over here or using a form that we'll touch on in a second. But then whenever this new item or request are going to appear on the board, we want salespeople, customer support uh, people, and just, um, basically anyone who knows that this relates to a specific request from a customer, they are able to come in and then connect an existing account re, uh, to that specific request. So then we're pulling the information from that specific account board, which lives over here inside of our CRM folder. I'm not going to dive deeper into this one, but essentially we have all of our accounts listed over here together with their value for the company. So maybe the total worth of their contract or something. And we can then connect those accounts to a specific request, then pull the worth, uh, the dollar value for this, for all these accounts and aggregate them on a specific, on another column over here. And that will allow us to maybe prioritize better our decisions of all the feature requests we want to develop in the next queue, for example. So I've sorted it uh, in a descending way. And you can then say, okay, I have my apps domain. I have a dedicated team with some capacity for the next queue to take on one of those requests. I'm going to select maybe the first one who's on the list because it's going to support most of the, uh, the, the larger amount of the accounts together with the larger uh, dollar value for the company. And then we can communicate those releases of the released features to the uh, listed accounts over here, either using these, uh, this uh, uh, subscription column or using any of the integrations, using an email or any other way using the CSMs and so on and so forth. Um, obviously, we can uh, add tags, so later on we can search for the most requested features, 
uh, anything and everything around that. So this can be customized according to the way that you prefer to work, but this is a best practice that we use internally in Monday to prioritize requests and it works very well. The last board that I want to talk about is the feature releases board. And this is somehow connected to the feature requests and the product roadmap boards. So anytime a new feature is going to be completed uh, and we want to notify anyone around it, this can be internally or externally. We might have a dedicated feature releases board um, concentrated around the specific queue. And anytime a product manager is going to be done with a specific feature or epic they're done with, uh, with development, they might want to release it to the public and let them know that we have something new coming up. We can then create a new item over here, say, who are the developers? Who is the uh, product manager as well? And then who is this released to? Maybe this is released to everyone or this is in a gradual release only to 30% of our clients. So anyone can have visibility into whatever there is going on with this feature and can communicate better with our external customers. We can also attach releasing notes. So again, using the Monday work docs, we're able to list all the release notes that we might have changed what has changed, why did we do it, what are the technicalities behind the scenes, and so on and so forth. So everyone has an easier access to everything in the knowledge base lives within the platform here. Um, this can also be attached, as we saw before, to the feature requests. So not only the product roadmap is affected by it, by the feature requests, but also the feature releases. So as we mentioned before, once we're connecting a feature request to, our, uh, to a feature release, we're able to then communicate this automatically to anyone who subscribed to those updates. So this is around the three uh, different boards that are supporting and communicating with the roadmap. And in the next video, I'm gonna talk about how we can create uh, user stories from our roadmap directly inside of our R&D teams. So we can streamline the process and have visibility from the product team into what's going on in the R&D team on an ongoing basis. So stay tuned.